Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on asthma. In this video, what we're going to talk about is beta-2 agonists for the treatment of asthma. Okay, so the structure of this video then, we're going to start off with a uh, brief discussion of the pathology of asthma. Okay, uh, we'll then talk about uh, beta-2 agonists, uh, how they work, uh, the different types of beta-2 agonists which can be given to treat asthma, so short-acting ones uh, for mild intermittent asthma attacks, whereas uh, long-acting beta-2 agonists uh, for more persistent asthma. Okay, right, and then we'll talk about uh, how they actually work. Uh, now, there's two main mechanisms by which they work. Uh, we'll focus in on the main one of these, which is that they produce bronchodilatation, and we'll look at the uh, mechanism or at least of what's known about the mechanism of uh, beta-2 agonists in producing bronchodilatation. Okay, so we'll start off with the pathology of asthma then. And whenever discussing the pathology of asthma, I think it's always a good starting point uh, to start by drawing out the structure of a bronchus, okay? Uh, so let's do that. So, um, when you're drawing out the structure of a bronchus, it's always a good idea to start by drawing a tube, okay? So, here is uh, the epithelium of the bronchus, okay? So, you have a columnar epithelium, okay? Here we go. So, uh, these um, columnar epithelial cells here, which means that they're very, very tall cells. So, these are the cells which are lining the lumen of the airway. Okay, and interdispersed uh, amongst these columnar epithelial cells, you'll also have uh, mucus secreting cells known as goblet cells. So I'll draw some of these in green in a moment. Okay, so here is our ring of columnar epithelial cells, and we'll colour a few of them in, and they're not going to be columnar epithelial cells, instead these coloured in cells are going to represent the goblet cells. Okay, so you've got these goblet cells interdispersed. Oh, whoops, that one's got a horrible colour. Never mind. Uh, a bad goblet cell over there. So, we have keywords so far. We have these columnar epithelial cells, okay, which are going to line the lumen of our bronchus, okay, and then interdispersed amongst the columnar epithelial cells, we have goblet cells which are secreting mucus onto the surface of the uh, epithelium which lines the bronchus. Now, the columnar epithelial cells are going to be ciliated, so let's put some cilia on these. So they're going to have finger-like projections which project into the lumen of the bronchus here, okay? And uh, these finger-like projections uh, are going to take part in what's known as the mucociliary escalator, basically. So, uh, the goblet cells and also things that we're going to see later, known as submucosal glands, are going to be secreting mucus onto the surface of these cilia, okay? And this mucus is, uh, its role is to trap uh, any dirt particles and also bacteria, uh, any sort of pathogen that enters the airway. So when you inhale in dirt particles and potentially pathogens, they're going to get caught in the mucus that lines the airways. And then what's going to happen is these cilia are going to gradually waft and they're going to move the mucus up the airways, uh, up into the trachea and then up the trachea through the larynx and then um, out of the laryngopharynx down the esophagus and then it will be destroyed in the stomach. Okay, so let me put this mucus in in green here. So you'll have mucus on the surface of the cilia and this is going to take part in the mucociliary escalator. Okay, which is very a very important part of protecting the airways, keeping them free of uh, dirt and free of infection, basically. So this is the mucociliary escalator. Right. Okay. So that's our um, that's our epithelial layer now completed. Now. What are the epithelial cells and the goblet cells actually sitting on? Because you have to ask, what is actually holding them in place? Why don't these cells up here just fall into the lumen? Okay, well, they're attached to a basement membrane, which is a very uh, rigid meshwork made of proteins, okay, that uh, is at the base of these epithelial cells. 
Okay, so this in turquoise, this represents the basement membrane. And I might even label this one up. So this is the basement membrane, which mainly consists of collagen, but you also have other proteins in there, such as fibrillin uh, and laminins, which are the proteins which uh, the epithelial cells actually have um, proteins in which attach to. Okay, so they have integrin proteins in their membranes, which then attach to the laminins in the basement membrane. Okay, then, underneath the basement membrane, you have another layer of important connective tissue, okay? Now, this is going to be really important for asthma, because this is where asthma is happening, really, okay? Uh, and this is what's known as the lamina propria, okay? So, there is a big, thick layer of connective tissue underneath the basement membrane. So, I'll colour this in in red. I want it to be slightly thicker than the basement membrane, because it is thicker than the basement membrane. Now, this will consist of a lot of extracellular matrix, so collagen, uh, polysaccharides, heparan sulfate, things like that, in the uh, extracellular space, okay? And then also, in this lamina propria, there will be many blood vessels, okay, which are supplying the tissue of the wall of the bronchus. Okay, there will also be an important type of cell uh, known as a mast cell in here. So let's put some mast cells in here. So this is a little cell here that's going to represent our mast cell. And this is going to be the star of the show as far as asthma is concerned. I mean, obviously, it's not a good cell for asthmatics. Um, but it is going to be the star of our show. It's what triggers the asthmatic attack. Okay, right. Uh, then uh, you have blood vessels also in this lamina propria, and these are going to be important as well because these are uh, going to um, undergo activation in response to pro-inflammatory mediators and they're going to start building up an inflammatory exudate that will build up in this lamina propria and cause the lamina propria to swell basically and when it swells, it swells inwards pushing the epithelium inwards and that's also going to contribute well it's going to contribute to uh, obstruction of the airways that occurs in asthma Okay, then, surrounding the lamina propria, which I'll colour in in vivid purple because I've used red, uh, you have a layer of smooth muscle cells. Okay, now these are also going to be very important with regards to uh, an asthmatic attack. Okay, so, these smooth muscle cells are arranged in rings, basically. Okay, so let me show this down here. So if this is one smooth muscle cell, it will then be connected to the next smooth muscle cell, to the next one on this side, okay, and they'll continue round to form a whole ring that uh, will reside within this uh, smooth muscle cell layer, okay? So here's this ring of smooth muscle cells. Right, now, if you can imagine what's going to happen if every single one of these smooth muscle cells contracts, then all of them are going to get shorter. Okay, now if every single one of them gets shorter, that means that the circumference of this entire ring is going to go down. So you're going to start off with a big ring like this, and then as the circumference goes down, you can see that the diameter also goes down because the circumference is equal, well, the diameter is equal to the circumference divided by pi, so they're proportional to one another, okay? Uh, so as the circumference goes down, the diameter goes down, the ring is going to constrict, basically. So contraction of the smooth muscle cells causes constriction, okay? And this constriction of the rings of smooth muscle cells is going to be transferred to the inner portions of the bronchi, or the bronchus, uh, and uh, uh, that's going to cause bronchoconstriction. So that's another key word. Bronchoconstriction means constriction of the bronchi, and it's due to the contraction of these rings of smooth muscle cells that surround the lamina propria. Okay, now, uh, another important little piece of terminology that I'd like to talk about is that there is a name, a word, which refers to the lamina propria with the basement membrane with the epithelial cells here, okay? Now, if you hear the word mucosa, 
That's what that refers to. It refers to not just the epithelial cells. It refers to the epithelial cells with their basement membrane with the lamina propria underneath. So that's what is meant by the mucosa, if you hear that. Now, why am I telling you that now? Because the next layer only makes sense. Its name only makes sense if you understand what the mucosa is. Okay, so the next layer that is surrounding the smooth muscle cell layer is what's known as the submucosa, okay? So the submucosa is separated from the mucosa by this layer of smooth muscle cells. So the submucosa, then the smooth muscle cell layer, then this mucosa, which is the lamina propria plus the basement membrane plus the epithelial cells. Okay, so this is going to be the submucosa here, okay? And in the submucosa, you're going to have a whole bunch of glands. Now, the submucosa isn't going to be awfully important in asthma. Uh, asthma is mainly concerning the mucosa. It's an inflammatory response in the mucosa, okay? Um, however, the submucosa, we're, we need to discuss it, you know, for our discussion of the uh, structure of our bronchus to be complete. Uh, so, here we go. Now, in the submucosa, you have what are known as submucosal glands. Now, these are just tubes, basically, that are lined by columnar epithelial cells. Okay, and they're secreting mucus into the lumen of these tubes. And then the tubes eventually uh, come out onto the surface of the bronchus, so they will eventually come up, they'll break through the smooth muscle cell there, they'll go through the lamina propria, and they're actually continuous with the epithelial uh, layer of the uh, bronchus, basically. So these uh, epithelial cells of the submucosal gland, they'll be sitting on the basement membrane as well, which will be continuous with the basement membrane here. And basically, if you imagine just pushing your finger down onto uh, these epithelial cells and making a sort of invagination inwards and then sort of taking it along like this in one of the in the plane of um, this submuco well in the the layer of this submucosal layer here then that's really what these submucosal glands are so they're just invaginations of the epithelium inwards that then uh, move longitudinally so originally you're bringing it in like this, but then once you hit the end of the submucosa, you'll turn around and bring it outwards longitudinally. Otherwise, you can't go any further, so the only way you can go any further is by bringing it uh, in the longitudinal direction. Okay, so that's what those submucosal glands are. Now, outside of the submucosa, you then have the cartilage layer, okay, and this consists of what are known as interconnected discs of hyaline cartilage. Okay, so here is an interconnected disc of hyaline cartilage. Here is another one over here. Okay, so um, my pen's starting to go, never mind. So um, I'll colour this in in green here. Okay, so this is an interconnected disc of hyaline cartilage. Okay, now in the bronchi, you do not have a full ring of cartilage, basically. Instead, you have these gaps in between uh, the interconnected discs, okay? And we'll call it there for this video whilst I get another pen, and we'll continue our discussion in the next video.